Most math subjects are relatively young. While geometry and arithmetic have been studied for thousands of years, other subjects such as calculus, probability, and analytic geometry were developed more recently. If you could travel back in time to the beginning of the 17th century, you would find the math collections and libraries to be considerably smaller. This was all about to change, and one of the people who helped change things was not a mathematician. Pierre de Fermat was born a little after 1600 in Beaumont de Lomagne in southern France. He received his law degree from the University of Orléans, and his professional resume was simple. He served as a lawyer and member of parliament in Toulouse until his death. And though he studied law, his education was broad. For example, he knew multiple languages, including Spanish, Italian, Latin, and Greek. Fermat's knowledge of languages and mathematics was critical to one of his interests, the restoration of ancient books. One of his reconstructions was the ancient book Plain Loci by Apollonius. But Fermat did not stop there. Perhaps inspired by the work of Apollonius, Fermat went on to discover analytic geometry. René Descartes independently developed analytic geometry around the same time. Because Descartes published his ideas, he's frequently given credit. Fermat, however, only shared his ideas in letters to his friends. But whether in a book or in a letter, the idea of connecting geometry with equations was a leap forward for mathematics. One of the people Fermat corresponded with was a scholar Blaise Pascal. Once again, in letters, Fermat helped develop another new branch of mathematics, probability theory. The catalyst for this was gambling. Pascal had been asked to find the best strategy for a certain popular dice game, and he shared the problem with Fermat. They exchanged letters, shared ideas, and together laid the foundation for the theory of probability. Fermat also solved several basic calculus problems. He developed a way to find the maxima and minima of certain functions, and was even able to compute the area under some basic curves. At first, this may not sound impressive. These are elementary issues to students of calculus today. But remember this, calculus did not exist during Fermat's lifetime. But of all the branches of mathematics Fermat investigated, he left his greatest mark on number theory. The study of numbers, pure and simple. Number theory is one of the oldest areas of mathematics. For over 2,000 years, people have studied the basic properties of numbers. But Fermat is considered the father of modern number theory. One problem frequently asked in number theory is, given an equation, find all integer solutions. Oddly enough, the question of describing all real number solutions is relatively simple. Just graph the equation. But when you restrict the types of numbers to integers, the problem becomes much more complex. These types of equations are called Diophantine equations in honor of the ancient Greek mathematician Diophantus and are amongst the most difficult of math problems. Coincidentally, it was while reading a book by Diophantus that Fermat made an exciting discovery. He claimed that the equation x to the n plus y to the n equals z to the n had no positive integer solutions if n was greater than 2. There are infinitely many solutions when n equals 1 or n equals 2, but for n greater than 2, Fermat was certain there was no positive solution. He made a note in his book that he had found a truly marvelous proof, but the margin was too narrow to write it down. This problem became known as Fermat's last theorem because of all his unproven statements. This was the very last one to be proven true. For over 300 years, mathematicians worked on this problem before it was finally proven by Andrew Wiles in 1994. Tremendous amounts of new mathematics were developed on the road to proving Fermat's last theorem. Given how difficult the problem was, many people wonder, did Fermat really have a proof? Was he so clever as to see a solution which no one else could see? We don't know. If only the margin had been wider.